Hi, my name is Lars. Uh, I'm not an academic, um, partially because I'm so dyslectic uh, that people usually smile too much, so they don't remember the content when I've written something. So um, I spent my time being a banker instead. Um, and uh, as a banker, I like certainty. Uh, that, is, that is the name of the game. And as you see, it's an ego, pro proving, providing proof of the truth. That is really important for us. We take risk, we price risk, uh, but there's no upside in actually having poor documentation. Um, it's actually no upside in having archives either, it's basically a cost. Uh, so we don't like cost. Um, so what I've done as a, a hobby project is work with Inigio, and we've created a couple of, of interesting products or they have, I've been involved in one, the digital originals that we're gonna speak about. Uh, so this is what I'm gonna talk about. So we like certainty. This is, this is the name of the game. And we have something called the ADAS regulation uh, in Europe nowadays, which means that if we follow the regulation, a digital document will be valid in court. And sometimes bankers go to court because we want our money back. We go to the enforcement, enforcement agency because we want our money back. So documentation is really important for us. By the way, our archives are called vaults, uh, if you've been wondering what our, we call our archives. Um, so we have a couple of products that we sell um, based on the, our background. Uh, and what happens when people from the different in disciplines meet and talk about what we want to solve and how we want to solve it is we come up with these magic solutions. Uh, and one of our solutions uh, is in a digital notary services. We're not alone to have such a thing. Uh, we do long-term preservation uh, and we do digital originals that can be used as a, a um, bearer instrument, a digital bearer instrument. So the digital notary service is something that you can use if you store things in the cloud. Uh, how do you actually know that what you get back from the cloud is the same thing that you once pushed up? So we, we can ensure integrity in the data the first step in data security. Um, and we do a lot of other things. Um, we don't use P PKI. Um, when this is an area, this is one of the products that uh, I'm really happy because we are helping an NGO, uh, NGO in, in Berlin and they're documenting what's happening in Syria. There are a lot of atrocities and war crimes going on and all the pictures and all the electronic documents that they are uh, gathering, they are hashing and they're storing the proof of the evidence with us. We don't charge them anything for that. Uh, there are other organizations that we would like to do that with as well, witness in the US, etc. So that's our pro bono side. Um, then we do a software as a ser uh, service solution, mainly for people to be able to comply with the new general data protection regulation. How do you transfer paper into something digital so you can kind of um, manage the right to be forgotten in an industrial manner? And this is kind of a, a big seller right now because uh, the GDPR regulation will come into effect in May next year. And then we have digital originals. Uh, and this is kind of a really cool product. So uh, in most countries, a promissory note that is connected with a mortgage or, or any kind of collateral is a living document. It's a master document that will change over time. And the document itself is the barrier of the right. And there's a difference between having a document with an original content, which is usually the normal smart contract. You can prove that 
10,000 copies actually have the original content. But we are talking about the master document that will exist in one copy. Um, and as a banker, I have to follow some legislation like the Banking Secrecy Act. Uh, so I can't, ha I can't have it in a central repository because then I'm actually saying something about a customer relationship that I'm not allowed to do. So it has to be able to, to be stored locally. Um, but there's a lot, number of areas where you actually have to have original uh, documents or authenticated original documents. Uh, and what we use is distributed ledger technology to enable this. Um, most, in most countries in Europe, the law is technology neutral. They don't care if it's papyrus or if it's paper or, or how you use it. Uh, and the term original is usually defined negatively. There's, what is an original? Um, well, the, it's basically, instead of talking about the original, you talk about what fraud is. Um, so there's, um, you have the possibility of actually agreeing on what the original is. But the original has to have some characteristics, and that you can read about in the law where you have the debt instruments, the banking regulation, and the enforcement regulation. What our idea was to create a digital document that was just like paper, but much better. So one of the things is we wanted to make a counterfeit safe document. Today with 3D printers, for instance, a manual signature on paper is not safe anymore. They can make varieties of your personal signing so precise that you cannot see whether it's a machine that's made a signature or it's a person or it's that person. So we're trying to create a document that is much safer than paper. There is an American company that has remote signing. So they have a 3D writer on one side, and you write on, on your notepad or your computer with a pen. And then sign, sign the paper. The paper document is signed somewhere else. We don't believe in that. We believe that we need to make something much more safer. You have to be able to transfer ownership. So I will give you the original, and I will not longer be a holder of the bearer instrument. Um, so we created a mechanism to create one single digital original. Uh, and it's stored by the owner. Everything about this document is hidden in plain, plain sight. So when we provide the truth about the existence of this document and the elements that, cons that actually is the document, it's not readable for anyone else, but the holder of the original or the copy. So um, I don't know how, how many of you know how, how a loan is kind of, the loan process is. Um, there are three layers here. Up here, you have the ledger. Here you have our software that is usually integrated in a bank or will be integrated in a bank. This is the bank's core systems, and this, this could be Credit Safe or someone else. Uh, and then you have the customer layer, the user interface. So what, what happens normally today is that uh, you go to your internet bank, you make a loan application. And then we do some scoring, and we look at the purpose. There will be payment capacity, et cetera. And then we do a scoring, and then we might approve it. We might get some more data from Credit Safe or someone else. We might ask for some more information from the customer. We might say no, and we might say yes. So then we're in the granting process of a loan. So what we do is we help the bank to create the first 
original document. Uh, and this is not a loan deed. It's just a draft. So in the next step, the customer will use his digital signature service, the bank ID, and he will sign the document. And simultaneously as that is done, we will put all the, all the identity and everything that is associated, the hashes associated with that document on the, on the uh, ledger. Next step, we hash the entire document, including the signature, and put it on the ledger. And then the bank stores that in the digital vault. And they will keep it in the bank. And then the customer says, uh, I don't want to have floating rate. I would like to have a fixed interest rate. OK, so we go to the key store. We make an amendment where we say, OK, we will change your terms, etc." And if we, for the generosity, or if it's to the benefit of the customer, we don't have to sign it. If it's something that has to be signed by the customer, another signature from the customer. This is the flow. Why we're chosen this is because it's very simple to implement. There is no le legacy in the bank. We will sub substitute the printer, basically. <coughs> and there's some web de development for the bank. Um, and we believe that this is, this is going to be huge, because these instruments are really, they will save so much money. On average, it will cost about 200 euros to just handle the paper for a loan. If they lose the original and start looking for it in their vault, because that happens, it's a thousand or 2,000 euros. Trying to find something that's lost in a vault takes time, I assure you that. It's a lot of money that can be saved. But it, there's also some consumer protection that is actually uh, something that we need to address. When loan documents are done on PDF, etc., it's so easy to forge. Uh, and if you want to enjoy yourself, you should go to YouTube and you should look at that. It's an entertainment about American uh, collection services. When American collection agencies are uh, basically putting people out of business due to hospital bills that they paid three, four years ago, um, and they don't have the proof. Uh, it's, uh, if you think that banking is bad, collection is worse. Uh, another area is trade finance. Uh, in trade finance, well, trade finance is a, a kind of a financial discipline where you help two parties that definitely don't trust each other. Uh, for instance, we use a lot of trade finance when we deal, deal with Africa, uh, with Eastern Europe, uh, Asia, etc. And there's a paper trail. Uh, there are documents. And, and um, these documents all have to be in original, in originals, one and only one. So for instance, a bill of lading, uh, you have the bank's uh, copy, the transporter's copies, and the importer's copy, all three originals. There are thousands of tons of papers that are in orbit, flown by FedEx, etc. Et um, quite a, a pollutive thing. Um, and we could substitute this. We could use the um, SWIFT, Society for Financial Telecommunication, and we could actually do exactly the same thing with the originals, because these are bearer instruments. And we wouldn't have to change the legislation. So our idea in Enigio is not to have the legislatures change the laws because we want to use new technology. Our idea is to come up with t technology that actually complies with existing laws and regulations and the trade agreements. 
Um, and the p benefits of, of digitizing trade finance as much faster process, much more secure. It's very annoying for an importer that bought a shipload of copper, uh, and when they come to the docks, they realize that the copper has kind of changed into stone. The amount and the number of frauds that we have in trade finance, uh, it's huge money. So the insurance industry would probably be quite happy to have an instrument that cannot be forged. So, in, in, in short, uh, we believe that this product will revolutionize any situation where you want to substitute paper originals and situations where you don't have a central repository where you have to hold your instrument locally because it's a bearer instrument. That's about it. Any questions? Or do you want to? I think we have maybe time for one question, burning question, before we move on to our next presentation. Is there anybody who would like to ask a question? Yes. How uh, one of your claims is a uh, simplified JD, uh, JDRP, oh, JDPR, sorry. JDPR, yeah. So, uh, <coughs> you a little bit. Going to the, the, the general data protection uh, um, regulation. Well, it, it's one of those European laws um, that no one will be able to comply with. Uh, it's a nightmare, um, basically. Because we have, in banking, we have tons and tons and tons of paper uh, where we actually don't know whether we have an ac active customer relationship. Um, so what we do in, in that little software as a service product is that we scan all these contracts. And then we OCR read them and put them in a database. And then we structure it. So you can mechanically say, or you just order, OK, any customer where we haven't had a customer interaction for the last five years, uh, I would like to delete. And then we burn all the paper. So there's no trace. So it's basically how do you manage the right to be forgotten? So and, and ADAS gives the opportunity to substitute paper with a digital file. So from that perspective, ADAS, uh, ADAS has been a blessing. So there's one regulation that is a nightmare and another regulation that is a blessing. All right. So. Um other questions, just note them down, and we'll come back to those questions at the end when we have our panel discussion. But for now, um, let's thank Ross.